Namaste everyone. My name is Shubham Alok. Welcome to my YouTube channel today. In this video, I am going to talk about how to achieve success in life. Recently, we have celebrated Vijaya Dashmi for the year 2022. So, Vijaya Dashmi come after Navratra, the nine nights of Devi. But somehow Vijaya Dashmi is more related to Rama, the god of success. Vijaya Dashmi basically means the 10th day of the lunar month, which denotes winning. Winning or accomplishment is synonymous with success. What you want in life is to succeed. Succeed in every undertaking you have. Succeed in every role as a father, as a mother, as a daughter, as a son, as a sibling and into everything. Right? Success is important in life. This gives you fulfillment. This gives you contentment and this gives you what not. The definition of success is different for everyone. And today, what I am going to talk about are the 10 tips that you can easily use into your life, even without using astrology, to guarantee success. But keep it in mind that whatever is your concept of success, that you will get fulfilled with this. So, make sure that you have a right approach. Your wish will get fulfilled. But, make sure to have the right wish. Because, Vastu, what we are going to deal in this video, Vastu works with your approach. Whatever your approach is, Vastu works in accordance with that. Vastu is like an appropriate atmosphere that help things grow. Now it is up to you to put a mango tree, put a banana tree, put a banyan tree or put a cactus. Vastu is just a good environment that helps you grow. What to grow? That depends on you. So the first most important thing is to have a positive approach and to have clear defined goals. If you don't have clearly defined goals, then believe me, there is going to be problem. Clearly defined goals help you reach those goals earlier. Whereas many confused goals, overlapping goals, creates issues and obstacles in your path to success. The first thing, what I have generally noticed, you know, there is something known as beam. So basically, when you see a roof, there is, there is a pillar type of thing made on roof to support it. That is beam. This is hanging below, downwards. Now, this beam is highly inauspicious. You should generally not purchase those properties where these beams are in between. Right, Sitting behind those beams, sleeping behind those beams for any purpose, whether you have your bed there, you have your dining table there, you have your sofa there, or worst, if you have your work chair inside a beam of the roof, it makes sure that you constantly remain under tension, you constantly remain under pressure, you are overloaded with work more than what you can do, more than you can handle. Many problems come there. So as a thumb rule, you should avoid such areas, avoid sitting behind such areas. And if you cannot avoid it, it is better to use a false ceiling to cover it. Covering that will help you cope up with 80% of these issues. But for 100% elimination, it is important that the beam should not be there at all. Or it should be at proper places, not in middle of the roof. Because then it will obstruct many things. If beams are on the corners of the wall, then what you can do is you can place everything, leaving that small gap that is covered by the beam. Right? Another thing, another very important thing is what I have seen. People don't keep their things sacred. That's the problem. Your clothes, specifically I want to talk about chair, your work chair if you do work from home or the prime chair, like, like if you are the prime person of your family or even not a prime person of your family, there is probably a place in the sofa designated for you. There is a place in dining table designated for you. There is a place in bed designated with you. Now you can share it with your life partner. That's all okay. 
but do not share it with others, specifically your place in the dining table and your work chair, whether it is into your office or it is into your home, whether you are doing work from home or you are going to an office. If others sit on your work chair, like occasionally, if there is a need, someone can, but you should not share your work chair, your prime setting position with others. You can share it with your spouse. That's all okay. But with others, you should not share it. Otherwise, like this other is intruding into your personal chair, others will introduce, will intrude into your work. And sometimes, many a times, often such businesses or the works of such people are handled by others, are in control by others, intervened by others a lot. People uselessly try to disturb you, try to challenge your position. Hence, this should be avoided. Another very important point that is whenever you sit for work purpose, you know your work table, that should be the back of the work table should be firm and solid for you to have proper backing of resources, proper backing of finances, proper backing of time, and proper backing of everything. If there is any problem with the back of the chair you use to do your work, then there will be problems in work also. This is something that you should keep in mind. And most importantly, if you want to rule into your profession, it is necessary to have a solid background behind your chair, behind the place where you sit, a window behind your chair, a door behind the chair is specifically inauspicious. In that matter, people working under you can revolt against you and can make your life difficult. You have to be careful about it. Also, not only the back, but I also give much importance to the front. Many a people have their work table in such a manner that the front of the work table, it is just adjacent to a wall. That's not good. That will hinder your progress. It is better to have a little bit of gap, good amount of gap at least, so that one person can pass between the front of your table and the wall. Otherwise, very few opportunities of growth will come. And even if it does not hamper you in one month of doing the change, over a long period of time, it will try to restrict many of your resources and much potential for growth will be lost. Hence, you have to be careful about it. Another important thing is in your home, the center of the home is Brahmistan. What you do is you take 20% of the property, 20% of the area, Find the center of that place. So basically you have to make a square inside the plot, inside the land, whatever we are considering. If things are not square, if the plot, if the piece of land is not square, then the areas which are falling out of the square should be taken as an elongation. And a proper square should be made of the property. And you have to find the center of that square, 20% of the total area. This will be considered as Brahmasthan, the place from where the goodness and divinity will descend. Now, many people have this Brahmasthan dirty. Because of this dirt, the blessings and the auspices of goodness, the blessing of the God becomes unable to reach you. Hence, it is necessary to keep the Brahmasthan clear, to keep the Brahmasthan clutter-free, to keep the Brahmasthan very airy, very neat and clean, and don't place anything there at all. This is the best position you will see in olden homes. The center of the home is even not having a roof. The center of the home, the center of the property is generally empty from the floor to all the levels, there is nothing built in the center. Rather, there is a window type of stuff on all the floors so that people can also commute. 
and it remains empty. It remains clear also. Now, if somehow in the center of this place, you have some kind of problem, there is some kind of problem, there is some kind of glitch that you cannot rectify. For example, the center of the home, very close to the center of the home is your bathroom. Very close to the center of the property is a, is, is an area where is drainage, right? Or any dirt, any dirty thing, drainage, bathroom, storage room, right? A anything where things are cluttered or where things which are to be thrown, when dis where discarded things are kept. If such places are surrounding the Brahmasthan, it will fill the blessings of the God with negativity will stop it from reaching you. In that scenario, what you do, the face of the God, the face of any particular deity for that matter, indicates Sattva, indicates Akash Sattva. You know, you, have, you must have seen idols of gods with only faces. This is available for Ganesha, only face. Devi, only face. And a few other gods, only face is sculptured only face is made this generally people hang in their front doors which i don't recommend but this should be placed in the brahmasthan to even increase even more increase the productivity positivity of the brahmasthan take a mask face mask of ganesha take a face mask of devi and put it in your Brahmasthan if there is a wall around, such as a bathroom wall or anything as such. Place it to the highest point of that wall. Or if there is no place, what you do is you keep a table, very clean table. That table somehow should reach around the navel or above the navel of every family member. And in that table, you can keep this face mask of Ganesh, Devi or even Sun. Sun is also a god whose only face is worshipped and the remaining part of the body of sun is not worshipped. And if you notice any temple where people have tried to make the complete body of sun god, that temple have been destroyed. Be it Konark of, Jagan, Konark of Odisha, Sun Temple of Gujarat, Mudhera Sun Temple if I am not wrong or the Sun Temple of Jammu. All of them have been destroyed. Sun is the only God whose body is not worshipped and only face is worshipped. You must have seen many masks of only sun face that can also be placed in the Brahmasthan to increase the positivity of Brahmasthan and specifically those homes where people are suffering with anxiety, people are suffering with depression, suicidal tendencies, people are having a lot of laziness, lack of energy and lack of power. Placing the face mask or the only the face idol of Surya, sun god, is highly beneficial and should be done as soon as possible. And just after doing the change, in the next 40 days, you will clearly see a revolution in your life. That goes without any doubt because I am recommending it to you. Right? The third thing is, in the property, sunlight should enter. Sun is the source of rejuvenation. Sun is the source of energy. Sunlight kills many bacteria and purifies everything. Overnight, many types of negativities come in the home. Every morning, it has to be cleaned. It has to be sweeped by the light of the sun. This is the prime concept why old people generally recommend an east-facing property Though east-facing property is not suitable for everyone and even a good west-facing property, south-facing property can do wonders, provided the fact it is rightly aligned by Vastu. However, the concept of sunlight coming in the home is very essential. So, in the eastern side, make a window, big window, not the small windows in which exhausts are fit. A big window should there be in the eastern side or a gate should be in the eastern side it is not necessary that you use that gate but a gate or a big window should be on the eastern side placed in such a way that from sunrise till 12 in the afternoon at any point of time for constantly one hour 
sunlight directly enters through that window or door to your home. Doing this will make the property more auspicious and will remove obstacles, specifically problems related to bad health, fatigue, and all these things from your life. And make sure that no window is positioned in such a way that sunlight from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. comes into your home. Or if you have any such window or any such door which lets the sunlight directly enter into your property between 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., that thing, that window, that door should be properly closed with a very thick curtain to avoid maximum of that sunlight. Otherwise, bad bacteria and germs will enter your property and that will create obstacles in your success, will specifically give health-related issues that will obstruct you from success and happiness. This is something that is very necessary to be followed. More importantly, I have seen one more thing. 80% of successful businesses, I have um, like discussed many of these things earlier also. Those places which are commercially very successful, those places which attract a lot of visitors, those places which have a good name, fame and prestige, those places which are popular, you will generally see as soon as you enter those places, there is a big porch. The height of the entrance is big. The height of the entrance is great. Generally, if you go to big hotels, what you will see is that the time you like, you know, you go from the driveway to in front of the hotel and you will see there is a big porch in the front. From that big porch, you go to the reception and then people go to the rooms. So the basic thing is the place from where you enter the property, that place should have a high roof, at least more than eight feet high, eight feet, 10 feet above is very good. Eight feet above is better. A high rise entry, a very high entry is very good. That takes your work high, makes you successful. If that cannot be done, then it is recommended so to have some wall hanging, to have some wall hangings in your front gate. There are few things you should place things such as, you know, it is done with mango leaves. Whenever there is a worship in home, that mango leaves are knitted together into a thread and that is put over the top of the door. So such wall hangings. Uh, such as, you know, such as this, mm. uh, such as this, uh, just such as a chandelier. I don't know how I'm pronouncing that. Jumar. A Jumar kind of a stuff is attached to the top of the door, right? Something should be put on the top of the door that should hang downwards. A chandelier in the center of the property. A jhumar in the center of the, in the Brahmasthan of the property, near the Brahmasthan of property is also considered very auspicious and it will give you multiple ways of success, multiple ways of progress in life that should be done if you want to make great name, fame in your profession and be very successful in your life. There is one more thing. There is one more very important. When someone enters your property, right, taking it from, from the door, I enter your home. What do I see first? 80% of the successful people, what you will see is you enter their property. And as soon as you enter, there may be a garden. After that garden, there will be a living room. And generally, successful people work in that living room understand this point. I am a visitor. I am entering your home. The first room that I encounter is my first impression of you. Other than that, as I go farther and farther and farther and farther, the last room is the last impression. Now, 80% of the time in properties, the last room is the bedroom. And if you have a habit of working in the bedroom, then people at last, after knowing everything about you, 
will know about your profession. This is bad. You should be known because of your profession. People should know because of your profession. People should know you because of profession. This way you will become successful. You will have professional contacts. People will know you because of your profession that will make you accomplished. And for that to happen, make sure that you work in that room, which one encounters first after entering your property. It is best that just after the main entrance, there is a garden. After that garden, there is an entrance to the property. And as soon as you enter the house, not the property, property includes the garden. So you enter the property, you get a garden, then you enter the home and the door of the home should open into a drawing room or should open into a sitting area and you should be working right there in that working area to get accomplished in life. Even if you cannot manage to have a drawing room there, at least have two chairs and one table and make sure, make it a habit to work on those two tables and the chair that will make you recognized in the world. People will appreciate your work that will open the doors of success. Other than that, a house. See, generally, people try to keep their houses clean. That's there. But they don't necessarily focus on keeping their houses fragrant. I should tell you, if someone is affected by black magic, you go to the center of their home, room, home. And in the center of the home, you will find a strange foul smell coming out. This is the first indication that black magic is being done on the native. So the, the either element, the Akash Tattva of Jupiter is getting hindered. It is very necessary that your home should be fragrant. This is the particular reason people keep flowers in their home, right? This is, this is, this is a path to, right? A smell is a quality of earth element. For you, to be resourceful enough to sustain your position and make a name in your area, it is essential for you to have a very strong earth element. And to do that, what you can do is around the center of your property, around Brahmasthan, you can have a flower vase. You can keep flowers therein. And even if you cannot have a new flower every day, at least use a room freshener or some kind of diffuser in your property to to keep it very mildly fragrant always so that anyone who enters into your property gets a soothing smell. This will make your life smooth. And other than that, this will help you have monopoly in your profession. This will help you be respected by your neighbors. It will help you be respected in your professional life. Other than that, if you have seen rich people, Generally, as I have told you, right, the setup is you enter the property, you are greeted by a garden, then you enter the home. Now, generally, after entering the property, before reaching the home in the garden, there are water bodies that were used profusely in the palaces of the kings. Now, generally, people living in flats or living in societies don't have a luxury of having a garden. That's not an issue. But make sure that around your front door, if possible, have a water body. You can keep a small fountain on a table. You can keep, you can place a big fountain or anything as such, but keeping a water body around the door in such a way that it does not obstruct the door, but whoever is entering the property notices that water body first is very auspicious. This gives you a positive influence of water element, which in turn ensures that you are successful in every undertaking. And it also ensures that people have good connection with you. And whenever someone asks them about anything that you do, you are the first person whose name they recommend. There is one more stuff. So generally, the you know there is something veranda. There's a concept of veranda in olden homes. You enter the property, you're greeted by a garden, right? After that, the garden ends and there is a small sitting area. 
and after that small sitting area comes the main entrance of the property. So a little bit of sitting area or in the case of flats, you also say a little bit of standing area in front of the main door of the home makes you self-sufficient, makes you have all the resources at your disposal that you need to do anything in your life. So it is necessary that before someone enters your home, before someone enters the main part of the property, the main block of the property, just before entering, there, there should be a small sitting space or a small standing space. If that is there, just a, a small type of veranda or a small type of sitting setup that will make you self-sufficient, will open your ways to success, will open your ways to progress. And finally, if you have seen kings, specifically the Chatriya kings, the Rajput kings for that matter, they generally keep artifacts in their home. What we do is we tend to ignore these things, you know, in a normal home, for a normal person, for a normal middle class person, decorating their home is not the first priority. And this is the biggest mistake that you do. If your home is not decorated, why will gods want to live there? And if gods are not living in your home, you will have to approach the god every time you are going to do anything. And if you don't approach, your things don't get successful. It is necessary to have the company of gods in your home. And remember, Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, fortune and blessings, don't live in dirty places. Not much. You should not overdo it but at least a little bit of artifacts, a little bit of idols that are not used for the purpose of worship, but just for the use of decoration, a little bit of paintings that are not used for the purpose of worship, but for the purpose of decoration should decorate your living room and should decorate every room. The habit of putting every idol to worship, putting every photo to worship or only putting your own photos like putting your own photo is very fine. Worshipping idols are very good. Worshipping images of gods are very good. But all these things should also be used to decorate your property. Home, property, whatever. Another thing is, if you are going to keep your own photo, portrait or anything as such, a family photo or whatever, it should be bigger than all other photos in the home, right? You cannot have a big idol of God and your small photo. That's not recommended. Either keep it of the same size or your photo should be bigger. After all, it is not a temple. It is your home, right? So it have to be this way. All of these things, I think, are very easy to follow. But still, if you are having difficulties in following all of them, follow as much as you can and I can guarantee you that within one year you will see success and you will see all kind of auspiciousness, success, prosperity in your life. This is my prime purpose to give you a better life to make you more fortunate, more aligned with success, more aligned with fortune. So try to apply all of them or as many as you can and uplift your life, be more fortunate. And the small announcement is I'm going to do a Vastu course, an in-depth four or five month long Vastu course where I'm teaching everything from the selection of plot to the muhurta of entering into the property on how to decorate the property, which furniture to use, where to keep what things. Vastu remedies and everything, including Vastu through the nakshatras, including Vastu through astrology, how to make Vastu changes, how to make a Vastu compliant home and to achieve what result, what Vastu changes can be, should be done. I am teaching it in depth in a four month course that is starting from this Saturday, 
the 8th of October 2022. And if you are seriously mean on changing your life, be becoming more fortunate, more happy, more aligned to fortune, you should join the course. It is extremely basic, though I am going to use Nakshatra Vastu and Jyotish in relation to Vastu. This starts from complete basic. And even if you don't know anything about astrology, but just can identify sun is written as SU. First house is the first house. Aries Rashi looks like this. If you can just identify houses, planets and Rashis in the horoscope, you can join the course, learn through it. And as it happens with all of my courses, once you join, you have lifetime support from me and have a direct connection with me. So if you are really serious about changing your life, highly recommend it to join the course. Thanks for watching the video. I will meet you in the next video.